Hello everyone, my name is Radkovic Miller and in this video course we will talk about Dutch defense. So Dutch defense starts with d4 f5. Uh, this opening was recommended by Elias Stein who said in his book that uh, f5 is best move against uh, d4. It was played, this opening was played by many very strong chess players like uh, world champion Alexander Alec Hein by uh, Neidor, uh, Morphy, also it was played in match between Botvinnik and Bronstein. Nowadays you can see that Magnus Carlsen very often played that or Hikaru Nakamura. So this is very solid opening for black and it's very active. You can see that you start immediately playing on king's side and black can get very strong attack on king's side. Also black plays very actively and takes a lot of space in the center. We will analyze d4, f5, but also we will analyze what will happen if your opponent plays c4 or knight f3. And after all these moves, we will analyze f5. And I hope you will enjoy and you will learn many new things. Let's start now with the main line in uh, Dutch defense with g3. So usually people play g3 against Dutch defense because that is uh, the safest for white and white will build like fortress for his king on king side and generally that is the safest option for white against Dutch. You keep developing so you play knight f6, bishop g2 and at this moment black has a few different things. Black can play d5 what is stonewall uh, pawn structure and uh, after that e6 and keep developing but we will analyze Leningrad variation in Dutch defense so it's with d6 and then g6 so this is Leningrad variation uh, you play Fianchetto on king side and in the future you want to play e5 and you will see that uh, this is very solid for black of course, the main move for white is to play short castle, we play bishop g7, white keeps developing pieces by playing c4, you play short castle, and white plays something like knight c3. At this moment, black has many different moves, so black can play knight c6, uh, queen e8, or something else. Generally, the main idea for black is to push e5 and to gain a lot of space in the center. We will analyze for black queen e8. I think this is very logical move because you want to immediately play e5 and then just to keep developing. You can see that e7 pawn is backward pawn. With queen e8 you are supporting your pawn and like I said you want to play e5. Uh, the most logical and probably best move at this moment for white is d5. So now white is stopping e5. Okay, generally white is not stopping so still we can play e5 but then white will take d6 and uh, white will control more space and it will be more comfortable position for black. Oh, sorry for white. Uh, so e5 is uh, an option and also that is very solid but here we will analyze a5 for black. The idea behind a5 is developing the knight on a6. You want to put the knight on a6 and later knight on c5 and a5 is very good prophylactic move because with a5 we are, we are stopping b4 by white and we uh, want to gain more space on queen side. In the future also black will play bishop d7, maybe at some moment black can jump knight e4 or black can attack the center by c6 and generally you can see that this is very simple concept because Next few moves, uh, you know what you will do. So you will play knight a6, knight c5, bishop d7, at some moment c6 or knight e4, and generally you are developing your pieces, and black doesn't have any problems here. Uh, after a5, white has a uh, few different things. So white can play uh, knight d4, that is the main move, but also white can play something like knight e1 or bishop e3 or b1. Also e4 is possible for white to uh, sacrifice the pawn temporarily and uh, to open up e5. We will start with the most popular move with knight d4. After knight d4 you just keep developing so you follow your plan and you play knight a6. Uh, in this situation obviously white can play immediately e4 
so to open up e file and later to try to exploit your weakness on e7 generally e7 pawn is weakness but good thing is that it's very easy for you to defend that pawn because you can do it with queen or with rook also maybe with bishop or a knight and generally it's very difficult for white to attack e7 for that reason for now uh, it's not that important that you have a backer pawn on e7 and like I said, it's very difficult for white to attack it. Knight a6, uh, the main move for white is b3. So white wants to play queenside fianchetto to put the bishop on long diagonal. What is very logical because you already have bishop on g7. And for white, it's uh, it's very comfortable to have bishop on b2. And uh, white is just uh, developing his pieces. So b3. We still develop, we play bishop d7, bishop b2, knight c5. Uh, at this moment you see that black developed all minor pieces, also black developed the queen, and black doesn't have big weaknesses in position, so we can say that uh, this is already equal position. But you need to be careful. Let's say that white plays a3 here. The idea uh, behind a3 is obvious, white wants to play b4, to attack your knight and to start attacking on queen side. After a3 it's right time for you to play in the center, to attack white center and that's why we play c6 here. c6 the most logical is b4 for white and then we just move knight on e4. So generally white took a lot of space on queen side but uh, you can see that white doesn't have anything concrete there and white is attacking only with pawns so white um, generally cannot do much on queen side and very uncomfortable for white is that we are attacking the center with c6 and also in the future d5 pawn can be very weak uh, let's see what will happen next white plays for example queen d3 what is very logical for white white wants to develop the queen and to put pressure to e4 knight queen d3 black is we can say forced to take on c3 white takes so this is classical uh, position for a Dutch defense and uh, you will see that when you start playing Dutch defense very often you will have this position. So we played the most logical moves for white, developing moves and uh, now there is something very important to remember, the next move of uh, black. Here very strong move by black is knight e4. And what is happening now? Now we are sacrificing f5 pawn but we, we will get a lot of activity also we will eliminate white white square bishop what's very important bishop on g2 is very important because that bishop is controlling h1 a8 diagonal and also that bishop is securing white king for that reason we want to give up our knight for the bishop like i said we are sacrificing the pawn but you will see that uh, very quickly we, we will take back that pawn and we can have very very strong attack on king side. Knight e4. Let's see first what will happen if white takes. We will take f4, queen e4, and then we play very strong move queen f7. Generally, the threat of queen f7 is bishop h3. So if white does something like let's say b a5 or something uh, what's not that forcing, then we have bishop h3 and when white moves the rook you take on f2. If white doesn't move rook you will take it and you will be the exchange up. So white is forced to do something about f2 pawn and the most logical move for white is f3. Now f pawn is uh, very well defended but you can see that white is weakening his king side and already king is very weak and white doesn't have that bishop on g2 what's very important. So later, when position uh, is opened, when you open up position, you will see that uh, it's very problematic for white's king. F3, we take CD5, white takes CD5, and then we take on B4. After AB4, we play Rook C8. And now you can see that black position is fantastic. Position of pieces is fantastic. You can see that this bishop is very strong. Rook is on open file d7 bishop is controlling a lot of squares also queen is very active we are attacking d5 so obviously black has compensation for sacrificed pawn and at this moment black has at least equal position 
uh, in general it's very easy for for black to play because next move you will double up rooks uh, knight is pinned d5 is weak you have fantastic bishop very active rooks for that reason um, obviously we have compensation for pawn uh, so this was about knight e4 bishop e4 f4 and uh, taking on d5 with pawn. Let's see now what will happen if white takes with the queen. This is not so good for white, although it's very logical for white to trade queens because white is material up. Uh, after queen d5 we play rook a c8, so we are attacking c4 pawn and uh, white cannot defend pawn on c4, so the next move will be taken on c4. For example, white plays bishop b2, we take that pawn. Uh, now, with, we are sacrificing b pawn. Uh, what is obviously that is not uh, so good for white because white still didn't finish uh, development and white is taking pawn on b7, which is not important pawn and uh, white queen will be out of play. But let's see what will happen. So queen b7 and here you play one very very strong move, bishop b8. What is the point now? You didn't want to take on d4, of course, because then white just takes bishop d4, and when you take rook d4, white will take your bishop. So if you take like this, you will just trade pieces, what is good for white, because white is uh, material up. So we don't take bishop d4, we play bishop e8. So still, this is under attack, and still the knight is uh, pinned. And also we have some other threats. So let's imagine white does something like e3, we take a b4, white takes a b4, and then we play e5. Now we are attacking the knight, and at the same time white queen is under attack. So white is forced to take queen f7, and then you take bishop f7. And you can see that now white just doesn't have a good move, and this is already almost winning position for black. So if white goes knight e2, we have rook c2. And uh, white will lose uh, either bishop or knight. If white goes knight b5, then we take on b4. And again, same problem. So knight is trapped, uh, you will be uh, piece up and you will have winning position. Uh, in case after uh, this, if white takes immediately there, then you play bishop h3 and then you take on c4. And then you'll get a similar position with. Uh, fantastic play for black and generally black pieces are more active and white king can be very weak. This is about bishop uh, e4. So bishop e4, f4, queen e4, you play queen f7. So you sacrifice pawn but you keep playing slowly, you have positional advantage because white doesn't have any more light square bishop. Also your bishops are controlling a lot of squares, a lot of space. And later you will also play rook c8, you will control c5, and you will have a full compensation for sacrificed pawn. This was about bishop e4 here. Of course, white isn't forced to take on e4 and to win pawn. White can also play something else. So white can take, for example, d6, and after b6, uh, white can now take on e4, but uh, it's something almost the same. So you will do completely the same thing with a uh, double attack at this moment because you're attacking c4 pawn and also you're threatening bishop h3 with taking on f2. For that reason you will immediately take back material and obviously it will be better. Instead of dc6, white can also play bishop b2. So this is the most... Uh, the, uh, this is the safest move for white, so white just doesn't want to accept uh, sacrificed uh, pawn and white just wants to, to keep playing normally and uh, safely. Bishop b2, then we play c5. This is very important move and it's very strong move. c5, now uh, white needs to do something about the knight and problem for white is that knight is pinned because bishop on b2 is undefended. So this is very problematic. Uh, white needs to play something like f3 and after we move the knight, white takes here and white goes queen d2. At the same time, white is attacking our knight and defending his bishop. So generally, if someone plays something like bishop b2, he needs to calculate also this, c5. Because now if white doesn't have f3, white can resign. So, you know, probably nobody will play something like that. Because it's very 
complicated to find this idea with queen d2. But still, this is not good position for white. Still, we are much better because we just take cd4 after queen g5, we play rook c8, and after rook c1, we play e5. So we want uh, more space in the center. Of course, if white takes, we'll just take with the bishop. This is very weak, and generally white cannot defend that pawn. Uh, again, you see king side of white. This bishop is completely blocked. So this position is much better for black. Uh, this was about uh, queen d3 and taking there with uh, knight e4. And also, of course, if white takes on e4 at this moment, you will just take uh, knight e4 and we will have something completely same. The next one will be again queen f7 and uh, d5 is weak. Also, we will play rook c8 to take uh, c file and we saw that black has fantastic position. So, again, just to say that uh, the idea of queen e8 is playing uh, e5 and of course, if white does uh, d5, now we will not play e5, so now we will play differently, we will play a5, then knight a6, knight c5, later bishop d7, also maybe c6 or knight e4, and you can see that it's very uh, simple, um, very simple play for black, because next few moves you know what you will do, so you will just play knight a6 with knight c5, and then just slowly, bishop d7 or c6, and uh, black has fantastic position.